Hello everyone. One year ago, a video tutorial about advanced virtual camera was posted, and today, this camera is being uploaded and updated with new features and improvements. There are two versions of this camera, ActionScript 2 and ActionScript 3. ActionScript 3 version can support advanced layers feature and will not require a separate script for it to work properly. Links on all scripts used in this tutorial are in the description below. For those who are not familiar with the old advanced virtual camera, everything will be explained in this video. To use the virtual camera, or VCAM, simply put it on screen, move it around the stage, and when you export the SWIFT file, it will show the part of screen you have selected with it. You can use this camera alone, but this camera offers a few useful features. Binding. Binding is the value that determines how strictly the camera follows the position that is set on the stage. If the binding value is 100%, it follows the camera strictly. If it's 0%, it does not follow it at all. If it's between 0 and 100%, it's going to get closer to the required position based on how big the value is. As practice shows, 10 to 20% binding is the best value to smooth the camera movement and yet keep up with the camera. To use the binding value, copy-paste the control panel from camera file into your project. Don't change the size of the control panel, it will break the script values. Break it apart and sort it on different layers so each element will have its own separate layer. You can guide your layer with the shake arrow or even delete it if you're not going to use shakes in your animation. You can control the binding value by scaling the green bar. You can adjust the binding value if you need smoother movements or more strict camera control during the timeline based on your preference. There is another feature that the VCAM offers which is shake. If you use binding, shake will be difficult to create, but still shaking is a very useful tool even if you don't use binding. To shake the camera, place the shake arrow symbol in the control field. Change the arrow's size to increase or decrease the shaking intensity and rotate the arrow to change shake's direction. Usually shake is only used during one frame, but if you want a continuous shake, you can keep it for multiple frames and tween it if you need to change the strength or direction through the timeline. If you are not satisfied with the shake power during the whole animation or during some certain part, you can adjust all shakes intensity by changing width of the shake power bar which is red. As mentioned before, in binding percentage values, shake power may vary during the timeline. Another shake related value you can control is the shake duration which is brown. You can use it to control how long the shake will subside if there are no shake symbols on the stage at current frame. If you set it to the minimum value, shakes will subside completely on the next frame following the shake. If you set it to the maximum value, shake will never subside and keep going at same intensity until you manually change it with another shake command. Another feature this VCAM offers is parallax. Compared to the old VCAM, this new VCAM has an easier border system. Place the border, which is the red rectangle symbol, on stage and adjust its size so the camera never leaves these borders. To create parallax symbols, you can convert images into movie clips. Be sure that the registration point is set on the top left corner. After converting the image into movie clip, you can place parallax symbol inside of it. Don't worry, this symbol won't be visible on export. The width of this parallax symbol specifies how much it will be binded to the camera. The thinner it is, the more the movie clip will be attached to the camera. Leaving it as it is will have symbol moving normally. Making the parallax symbol wider than the original width will make it closer than the main plane. If it gets too close to screen, it will start to fade out. To change the fading settings, you can use the parallax fade bar on the control panel which is light blue with the gradient. The solid bar determines how close the camera should be to the parallax plane for the object to completely disappear. The gradient bar determines the range of fading in or out. You can remove the gradient bar if you want the parallax objects to disappear without fading. The final feature is quite complicated to use, but very useful and effective for 2D plane animations. The walkthrough might be a bit difficult to understand at first. Basically, it allows you to attach 3D backgrounds modeled in Blender to your 2D plane animations. A good example of this, the Imitator Collab 2 hosted by Shuriken, or the Castle Sync Collab hosted by Avalon Crow. To use this feature, you will need to install a set of JSFL plugins and one Blender plugin. To install JSFL plugins, you will need to locate your app data folder first. You will need to know how to do this on your operating system. After you locate the folder, if you use Flash 8, then navigate to Local, Macromedia, Flash 8, Your Language, Configuration, Commands, and place all the JSFL files into this folder. If you use Animate or Adobe Flash, you will need to open 
Local, Adobe, the version of Flash or Animate you use, and follow the same steps. Open Flash or Animate, go to Commands tab and look to see if the commands Place Background or Track Camera are there. If they are, then you have installed it right. As for Blender, you will need to open the Blender program. At the top left menu, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons tab and click Install. Go to destination where Place Camera Plugin is, select it and click Install Add-on. After installing it, check the box on the left to enable the plugin. Close the Blender Preferences window. Now if you click View tab in 3D Viewport and see Attach 2D Camera item on the bottom of the menu, that means you have installed the plugin properly. This plugin was made for Blender version 2.83.0, so there is no guarantee that this plugin will work on other versions. If you have installed Blender and JSFL plugins properly, you are ready to start attaching 3D background to your animations. First, you will need your FLA file with your animation and Blend file with your background to be in the same folder. After being sure that you work in FLA that is in this folder, you need to track the camera. There are two ways of tracking camera. The first method is using the track camera command. Using this method ensures that each value controlling bar is in its own layer and they remain throughout the timeline. Also, it requires your camera binding and shake related layers to be keyframed. To save the tween versions of these layers, duplicate them, set these layers to guide, so script will ignore them during analyzing the stage, and keyframe non-guided layers. Once you're ready to track the camera, go to Commands and click Track Camera. If you follow the steps properly, the text file named Camera Tracking Text should appear in the folder with your FLA file and contain coordinates of the camera for each frame. The other way of tracking camera is by creating new layer at the top of all the others. Placing the tracker symbol on this layer, export Swift file, wait until the output console will show you the message saying done, copy everything above the camera tracking text, and paste it into the required file. If you don't have this text file, create it yourself and paste the content. Don't forget to save. This method might be longer, more complicated, and require you to wait for the whole animation to play, but it is more reliable than the first method. You can use this in case the first method does not track the camera correctly. Next, you need to export Swift file and convert it into MP4 using Swivel. Link on Swivel is in the description below. Inside the Blend file, drag and drop that MP4 file on 3D viewport. It may take more than one attempt. It will create an empty object with this MP4 file as an image. Select this empty and the camera. Go to View and click Attach 2D Camera. This will place the camera and empty on stage using coordinates from Camera Tracking File. If you scroll through the timeline and see that no matter where the camera is, the objects on the video are aligned in space perfectly, then you have installed the camera the right way. If you export Swivel Project from Action Script 3, there may be a bug that may not render the first frame causing objects changing positions on each camera movement. Just simply go to the empty settings, go to Image tab, and set the frame from 0 to 1. In most cases, this should fix the issue. You can use the environment you see on the empty to help you design the background. All that is left to do is render the file. Go to Render Settings, set the resolution you are going to use in your animation. As for the output file, set it to Flash Container. You may play with the settings to have a quality that suits your preference. After you rendered MP4 file with the background, go inside your FLA file and use the command Place Background. It will prepare the background holder symbol and place it exactly where the camera will be. If you see that the place symbol does not match the camera on stage, don't freak out. It actually follows final camera position affected by shakes and binding. Open the background holder symbol for editing, drag and drop the FLV file into the symbol, press Next, select Embed Video in Swift and play in Timeline, Next, Next, Finish. After import, adjust the video to the given rectangle and now you have successfully attached 3D background to your 2D plane animation. As an extra tip for making 3D backgrounds, add shadows, light sources from effects, interactions with the 3D environment, and don't forget to do a masking of objects being covered by environment. This will prevent it from looking like a 2D animation slapped on top of a 3D background and will form a single environment that will be much more pleasant to watch. As a bonus, there are three more scripts that may help you organize your library. Add prefix, add certain prefix to all selected symbols. 
Add suffix works similar but with the suffix and rename part of symbol replace one string of symbols to another in every selected symbol. Well, that's about it for scripts and camera features. Speaking of the old version, there were some bug fixes, like scripts for ActionScript 3 worked in Swift files, but not in MP4 files exported in Swivel. Content was cropped outside the canvas in MP4 files as well, error spams in output console, and etc. There is still a lot of room for bug fixes and development, and if a lot of people will need this camera, development will continue. The camera is free to use for both personal and commercial purposes. Credit is not required, but it still would be interesting for Shuriken to see where the scripts were applied. If you encounter problems, comment under this video and Shuriken will either try to resolve it or fix and re-upload the camera. Thank you all for watching. Hope you will find these scripts useful.